Today, I just wanted to share how I schedule my days for maximum efficiency and maximum productivity overall. So I start my days out typically at the same time every single day, typically at around 6 a.m. Now, it's not perfect. There are some nights where I do choose to stay up later, whether it's working or doing something else, and I'll wake up later as a result. I don't typically try to sacrifice sleep unless I am at a deadline for something that needs to get done 100% by the morning. So for the most part, I try to get my eight hours of sleep and I'll wake up around 6 a.m., meaning I'll sleep around 10 p.m. every single night. So I typically do start my days early and I'm not here to say that it's better to start your days off early versus sleeping in late. Like that actually does not matter whatsoever. But why I like it is because usually in the mornings, there's not as many people bothering me. In the mornings, there's not all these people barraging me with calls and text and things that I have to do to serve them for whatever it is, for whether I'm coaching or for my real estate investing business or for my social media team, whatever it is, in the mornings, typically no one's bombarding me with stuff. So for the first really four, five hours of my day, um, depending if I work out in the morning or not. So I should probably start with this. Most of, the mor most of the mornings, I tend to work out first. So that's the first thing I do before I even brush my teeth or anything. I just wake up, I drink some water, and I leave to the gym. Or if it's a faster kind of day and I need to start work early, if it's something that's going on, I will work out at home as well. So it just kind of depends on the day, but typically I work out first. And I do that because it's what works well for me. Now, if there are days where I do not want to work out early, I will choose to work out later in the day after I work. So it's complete preference. It's You have to allow yourself, in my opinion, to be adaptable with your schedule. So as I'm explaining my schedule, yes, there's a general way that I tend to work and tend to operate my days, but I keep it flexible. And the reason why I keep it flexible is because if you get stuck with this idea that you have to do or live a certain way or your schedule has to be a certain way and it doesn't happen that way and you feel thrown off on your days, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle in business as an entrepreneur in life if you're not adaptable. That's one of the biggest things that I preach is to try to be adaptable. So like I said, first thing I do is work out in the mornings and typically my workouts are 45 minutes or so or an hour total in terms of how long I'm at the gym. And then I drive back home, I get ready for the day. And usually my first thing is when I'm working, if I actually do work out at 6 a.m., um, I might start my workout at 6.30, finish at 7.30, then come home um, by eight o'clock or so. And then it takes me time to, to get ready and whatnot. And I probably will be able to start work by 9 a.m., give or take a few minutes. Maybe I'm starting by 8.30, maybe whatever. But typically I'm starting work by 9 a.m. Now, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., the goal is to never accept any type of appointment. There is one Monday of every single, the one Monday every single week, I do have a meeting every single Monday. But for the most part, I try to not take appointments from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Because from that time period, I'm focusing on my stuff. I'm focusing on the work that I need to do or the projects that I need to move forward alone. This is like my grind time. This is my alone time where no one's bothering me. Ideally, I'm on do not disturb unless I am waiting for a call that needs to be taken care of. But for the most part, I'm on grind time, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. undisturbed time. After 1 p.m. is when I'll accept meetings. And that's typically when all my, my meetings or my appointments are. So all my Zoom calls for my coaching students, all the new meetings that I set or the podcasts that I create are set typically in the afternoons after 1 p.m. But for the first part, most of my mornings are spent honestly on content or the things that I'm trying to create, whether I need to create training videos for interns or uh, brainstorm things for podcast or film videos for YouTube or TikToks. Like it's my solo time to get the stuff done that needs to get done. So I do that in the mornings. Now, after that, like I said, I have a lot of different appointments after 1 p.m. <clears throat> and it's a mix of coaching calls because I do coach students on how to make money through real estate investing. So sometimes it's those calls. Sometimes it's calls with my interns or my team for my real estate investing business. 
Sometimes it's scheduled time for podcast. Sometimes it's just, I don't know, doing an assortment of things where there's people involved. Like from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. are typically my people time, my non-solo time. And if I have time between meetings or anything like that, I always try to find time to do the things that I need to be doing like my solo time. So if I have extra time between a meeting, like I have 20 extra minutes, I will then revert back to the things that I was doing in the morning to try to still accomplish whatever projects I'm trying to move forward. So that's typically how my days work. Um, in terms of breaks or eating, honestly, this is just what works for me. I might be a little bit crazy, but I don't typically try to take breaks during the workday. I know it's a very opposite type of ideology or thought that comes from the nine to five workers or that, that job kind of setting, because typically, you know, you have your lunchtime, you eat lunch at 12, you have two different scheduled breaks within the eight hour shift. Like I typically just try to work. <laughs> I try to grind in my eight hour workday, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the day. But typically I try to grind and I tend to enjoy actually being hungry during my workday as it progresses because it causes me to be more focused. And I want you to try this actually, because I don't want you to be closed minded Just try it at least, but try to feel hungry. I think that nowadays no one feels hungry anymore because food is so readily available. All these high caloric foods with high sugars, high fats, high carbs, all these things are so readily available that it's kind of hard to be hungry nowadays. So try this out. It's gonna feel really uncomfortable at first, actually, if you're not used to it, but try to go through a work day, not eating lunch, if you typically do that, and just eat later. Like it's te technically a, a temporary fast or an intermittent fast, but the goal behind it is just once you kind of do it a couple times, you might see it might work well for you because humans are wired from the old days when we had to hunt for food, we are wired to not eat. We're wired to hunt for our foods and it, it's in our brains where when we're hungry, there's clarity, there's focus, there's clarity because back in the day, that's what we did to actually find food and how we survived. So it's ingrained into our brains to be focused and to have clarity when we're hungry. So that's typically what I do. And of course, there are some days where I'm like, I'm really, really hungry. I will eat right now. It's lunchtime. Like I want the food right now. So there's some days where I'll choose to, but that's typically how I work my days is again, first four hours uninterrupted me time and work time me time, meaning uninter uninterrupted moving projects forward time. After the first four hours around 1 p.m. when that starts from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., it's a lot of different meetings, a lot of different phone calls. Uh, for business in general. Now, this just works for me because I've noticed that when I try to flip that script and when I try to start my days out with meetings right away and all this stuff is, I find that I just end up being in phone calls and meetings all day and talking to people that I never actually find the time to do my, my time to essentially move projects forward. And I end up having to do that stuff late at night, which is not ideal for me. So this is a way to make sure that I have my time set in the way that I want to get all the stuff that I need to get done. So first four hours after I work out of work is me time of individual solo grind time, then it's meetings. And then after that, this is actually more important than you think after you are finished working, whether you choose to work eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever it is. Now I tend to work about eight hours a day, sometimes more. Eh often more. And that's just because right now it's a choice for me. Uh, at this stage in my career, I'm young and I'm not married. I do have a girlfriend, but on the days that we do not choose to go on a date and stuff like that and see each other, then I can just choose to work because work is fun to me. And I just have to choose to do the things that are fun to me, which is typically work or just educating myself, whether I'm watching YouTube videos on trying to achieve a certain skill or watching a course to achieve a certain skill. That's typically what I do after my 5 p.m. deadline of trying to get all my work done. Now, of course it depends on the kind of day it was because sometimes, like I said, I will choose to work out later at night. But if it's not one of those days, then I'll probably choose 
to maybe do more stuff related to content because that's my biggest focus this upcoming year. Maybe it's scripting, maybe it's coming up with more ideas, maybe it's talking to my content manager to see what I can offload to him or to train him on and different things like that. So that's typically what I do at the end. Now, if my goal is to actually sleep eight hours a night and everyone needs different amounts of sleep, I tend to operate well off of anything, but I know that I feel like I operate best off of eight hours of sleep or so, seven hours, eight hours, whatever it is. But if my goal is to sleep by 10 p.m. every single day and actually fall asleep by 10 p.m. so I can wake up at 6 a.m., then I have to treat my night routine very carefully. My goal, and this doesn't happen all the time because I'm not perfect, but I try to avoid the bright lights like what I'm having right now really late. Like if I'm looking at these bright lights an hour before 10 o'clock, so at 9 p.m., it's gonna be tough to sleep. And I just have to know that moving forward. So I try to be winding down for bed, meaning in my room, the room is dark, and I'm just either reading my Kindle or reading my book or just doing whatever in a dark room by 9 p.m. Now that doesn't always happen, but just that one step alone has helped me maintain good sleep. It's just being in your room, make it dark, an hour before you're actually supposed to fall asleep and then try to fall asleep because sometimes it for most, most people it takes a lot of time to actually fall asleep. So if my goal is to be in bed, showered up, all that stuff by 9 p.m., then that leaves me from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. to get whatever it is done that needs to get done. Now, the first and most important thing is I eat because obviously I haven't eaten throughout the day if my goal was to kind of not eat during the workday and focus on work. So I eat and I typically do a lot of in-house food. Um, I don't really cook a lot even, but a lot of my food is just very quick, very high protein and easy. That's, that's kind of how I operate. So maybe an hour of that four hour time from five to 9 p.m. is eating. The other three hours are just really anything I choose to do, whether it's visit my girlfriend or visit my family, hang out with them, or I could choose, depending on the day, to progress more projects forward or learn more and educate more with courses or YouTube videos or whatever it is I'm trying to do. So that's typically how my day works. And I just try to shower so that I can make sure I have enough time to prepare for night, do my night routine with my, my skincare, stuff like that by the time 9 p.m. hits. And that is how my day is scheduled. Now, this could work for you, could not. I just wanted to share this so you have an idea of how it is like to operate my life doing all the different things that I am doing. Because right now, I'm running a real estate investing business. We're flipping houses, we're wholesaling houses. I'm doing it all virtually, running a team that way. I'm managing a whole content production studio in a, a YouTube channel, a podcast, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're doing all these things, so I'm managing all of that. And then I'm also pretty much coaching over over 300 real estate investing students right now. So I'm doing a lot and I'm doing it all within really an eight hour period every single day, sometimes more. And now that's my weekdays. Often, I will actually choose to work on the weekends too. It's just a choice. It's a choice that you have to make for yourself. I also have the ability to not. It's always for me, if I choose to work on a weekend, it's because I want to. It's not because I have to, most often, hopefully. But that's how I operate my days, my weeks, and it works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, cool, but at least now you have another perspective on how you can operate your days. Hope this helps.